Right, welcome to our first game today, ladies and gentlemen. This is the WCS Challenger League, the qualifier, formerly known as the Code A qualifier. And we are currently looking at a Terran versus Protoss game. Starting to the top right, we have top, uh, our Terran play in blue, and starting to the bottom left is the one and only here, Dan Stamkowski, a.k.a. Artosis. It's really him, man. This is actually happening. We cast Artosis' game. I think this is the first time one of Artosis' games has been cast competitively yep. since like his NASL run in the, that PvP match that everybody remembers. Well, the thing about him is that he is currently playing in the second round here against Top. Artosis got a free win in round number one. His opponent was apparently due to... Um, error or mistake listed twice in the brackets and therefore Toast got a free win is now in the second round facing top who already beat his first opponent and our first map here in the best of three is actually Daybreak. Yep. Daybreak, Whirlwind and then Belcher Vest is going to be the map list for all Cassidy Qualifier games because those are the maps and that is the order. So only Velsh Vestige will only be played if it goes to a game three. And uh, top going for a normal barracks opening here so far, and as is Artosis going for a gateway. So no Nexus first, no Command Center first, and top takes a gas. Yep, top taking gas here right away for Artosis, of course, now starting with the gateway, and we're going to find out what exactly he's going to do. People were joking a little bit that he should actually just start with a cannon rush against top. He's not going to do you that favor. He's been playing quite a bit, has actually shown a lot of his games on stream as well, and now wants to compete here in the qualifier and do as well as possible. Taking now gas in his own base of course too and uh, what top is going to do that's something that we're going to find out very very soon with the gas here doesn't go into uh, any kind of early expansion just yet yeah oh this probe's going to get in here and see the gas this is really important for him now he knows that uh, a reaper will likely follow and he can stick around here for a second and see uh, well now he has to stick around because the <laughs> depot has been dropped but he wants to see is a reaper being made or is a factory going down and now that he sees no factory being made in a few seconds here he'll know okay a reaper is coming so no matter what I do top will be able to jump in there and scout it yep that's really important for him to note. If you start with the Reaper first as a Terran player, you always get the chance to go into your opponent's main base and find out what's going on. And scouting information, that's really what it's all about in StarCraft now. So this is really important for, of course, Atosis to know, but also Smart by Top. Especially since he doesn't know exactly what Atosis is going to do. When you're playing in the qualifier, as in the Code A qualifier, as it is known now, the WCS Challenger League qualifier, you can always be cheesed by an opponent very, very easily in one of the first games. So it's always important important to scout even more. Yeah, and Artosis Chrono boosts his Stalker now, realizing that he needs to get it out as soon as possible. He's confirmed 100% without a doubt it is going to be a Reaper expand. Did not see the reactor on the barracks that follows, so he doesn't know uh, the command center is coming on the high ground like this. But since his probe was killed, he's going to have to stick at home and just play a little bit defensively here before he gets his own Nexus. Nice positioning on that Zealot. Chases the Reaper out immediately. Yep, the Reaper has to hightail it out of there. Got just a quick limbs on the gateway. D knows that there's the only thing that he basically knows at this point is that there was no Chrono Boost and uh, that yeah the gateway research isn't ready, which is not too yeah. much. So Atosis, he's going into his own expansion, placing down the Nexus now at the bottom, which hasn't been scouted by Top just yet. So if you look at his scouting information, he doesn't know about this. He only had a quick limbs at this, so all that he knows for now. Yeah, just a limited amount of information. Same is true of Artosis, though. He hasn't been able to go into Top's main base and scout for a while, and that may change with his Mothership Core if he wants to fly it over there and take a little risk. Um, he could also pressure at the front with his Stalker, but with the Reaper around, that's always a, a risky choice to make because you don't want that Reaper to sneak in and see everything you're doing. You need the Stalker to be nice. nearby. Sneaks the Reaper past the Stalker and now knows, of course, not only about the expansion, but heads into the main base. So top, he knows exactly what's going on. He sees the Robo here. Atos is even trying to use his probes to catch that Reaper. Not quite able to pull that off, though. Yep, the Zealot here actually going to take some fire as well. He's got the Stalker on the low ground intentionally here to try to catch the Reaper on its retreat, but he won't be able to kill it. Yeah, the Reaper, it's just—it's such, uh, such a great unit in Heart of the Swarm right now. It's really more of a scouting unit than a harass unit. You see it occasionally being used with the three, four, five Reapers against Zerk in the opening, but not all that often. And now we have Widow Mines already in the game. Just one to be a little bit safer here. But what Top is doing now, while he's going into the Medivac so that he can drop the Widow Mines in Atosa's base, 
because he's moving out with those marines, trying to make sure that the Zalnaga Watchtower is occupied by him, so that Atosis has no chance of actually seeing what's going on with the drop. Exactly. He's not going to be able to see the Widow Mines coming down here. He checks, make sure that Artosis is in the dark here. Medivac's coming out. He will be able to boost the Widow Mines into the main base or walk them into the natural. He can do a two prong attack. He's keeping them at home here just in case he needs them. And then as soon as the Medivac's out, he can minimize the, the rush distance by just boosting across. Now, the rocks at the bottom are already gone. Dustin Brown is a little bit sad. But besides this, Mothership Core here currently for Atosis, who is now going into the first Observer, and that is going to do him a lot of good if he actually keeps it nearby, or if he gets a second one, because he needs to have detection in case there's really going to be a Widowmine drop, and look at that, there it is. Yeah, and no second Observer just yet, he starts the Robotic Support Bay immediately instead with a Forge, he can start a second Robo, but he's going to be a little bit preoccupied with this attack now, even the Reaper leads the charge, the Widowmines go into the Natural. The Widowmines in the Natural, and immediately being dropped, Atosis pulls out with the probes right away, but now he has to go past all those marines, taking a lot of hits here, whereas the Nexus can is already active. Top is going for the aggression. Yeah, he's going to target down this pile on Artosis with not a lot of units here. Widowmine takes out several of his probes in the main base here. Artosis is starting to drop in supply, does not have enough units, his core is unpowered. He was really relying a lot on the Nexus can, but it just doesn't do too much. We only have one stalker left at this point, and this is a huge problem for Artosis, who already lost a fair amount of harvesters, and those marines, they are not done yet. Yeah, the probes here just kind of stuck on the edge of Tosis is losing a lot. He's forced to use his probes to fight here. He went for a very quick robotic support, but that's it. G G. Game over, and top takes game number one in the best of three.